I, I want to have unity in the body of Christ so bad, but there's just so much foolishness in Do Christians really hate unity within the body? I don't believe they do. And Marcus Rogers has been on a push lately to speak about unity, unity, unity within the body and that we should put aside these differences that we have because it's not a heaven or hell issue, mainly speaking about the Trinity, which is a, a view that he's been opposed to for a very, very long time, and yet he wants people to come together and accept him within the body while he denies a very essential part of the Christian faith. Other aspects is the fact that he pushes a baptismal regeneration. That, again, is contrary to the biblical faith. And not to mention the fact that he does teach and preach a works righteousness view of salvation. Now, he tries to be careful with his words to make it not so noticeable. I don't know if that's purposefully or if that's because he just doesn't realize it. Because I think there's a lot of things biblically that Marcus just doesn't realize. But these three things here, when you add works to the gospel, when you add baptism is necessary for salvation, and when you deny the Trinity, these are essentials. So when it comes to having unity, you can't have unity in the things that are absolutely essential for one to believe to be Christian. The Bible says in Amos 3, can two walk together unless they be agreed? The answer is no, we can't. But see, Marcus wants unity. And most false teachers will push and push for unity because they want to be accepted in and embraced. We see it with Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons today. They, the Mormons drop the title Mormons. They just want to be known as the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because if they can drop that Mormonism tag, and they can just say, hey, we're, a, we're the Church of Jesus Christ. Well, like, like Marcus, what Jesus Christ are you worshiping? Do you claim to follow? Do you claim to have faith in? Because the Jesus Christ of the Mormons or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not the same as who has revealed himself to us in the Scripture, the second person of the Trinity, who is fully God, yet fully man. And he's not the Father, and he's not the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the correct Jesus, you don't have the faith. Because the Jesus that you follow in worship can't save you because he doesn't exist. So just by saying you believe in Jesus, again, Mormons say that. Jehovah Witnesses say that. They want to be accepted as another Christian denomination. But they're not. Because like the Mormons, they believe in a different Jesus. Just like Marcus Rogers does because, again, he denies the Trinity. But you see here, he wants unity. I want unity so much. And people, they're representing religion. They're not representing him. I can tell that they don't know him. I can tell that they're not, you know, filled uh, with the spirit. I could tell, like, when people are just all about themselves or Christianity has become some kind of, you know, business. And so, so then, you know. Marcus says he can tell that these people who are ultimately the ones who are pushing back against his teaching are more religious, that they don't know God, that they don't have the Holy Spirit. He can tell that. It's based upon his feelings. It's based upon what he thinks he's receiving from their spirit to his spirit, which, again, is foolishly trying to apply something that the scriptures do not teach. And the way that you know if someone is of God, first and foremost, their doctrine is going to be correct when it comes to the essentials. 
I'm not talking about a new believer, somebody who doesn't know every single detail. They can't explain it to you. But when they sit down and someone starts to break it down and show them from the scriptures, if they're genuinely saved, they do have the Spirit of God, who is the one who leads us into all truth, will illuminate what the scriptures teach. So when Marcus says, I can tell they don't know God. I can tell they don't have the spirit of God. He's lying. He's being deceitful because the way that you tell is by the scripture. So the first way that you would know if somebody is genuinely of God is their doctrine is going to be right. The simplicity of the the gospel. They're going to have the correct understanding of the gospel. They're going to have an understanding that Jesus Christ died for their sins. So when it comes to these essentials, they're not going to spend year after year after year pushing back against the things that are actually true and revealed to us in the scriptures like Marcus does. That's why we say Marcus is not of God. He's the one who doesn't have the spirit of God. Because he's relying upon his experiences, his feelings. Hindus have feelings and experiences as well. They have kundalini snake spirits and they have all kinds of weird things that take place that look very similar to much of what goes on in the kind of charismatic backgrounds and circles that Marcus tends to run. And so when you say you can you can tell that these men are not the Spirit, based upon what? Your feelings? We can say Marcus doesn't have the Spirit of God. Marcus is not of God. He's not a brother, based upon the doctrine, based upon the truth from the Word of God. That's how we know, because the Scriptures will testify to what is true. And so we can examine those things. All Marcus has to do is break down some Scripture. That's it. That's all he's got to do is break down some Scripture. Get in a conversation with somebody, one of us who are pushing back against Marcus and his teachings, and sit down and have a conversation from the scripture where you can be held accountable, where you can be held to break that passage down in its context. And 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 I think the only thing that's really going to be the thing that is a difference is when Christians really start walking in power. Because most Christians today, they're just walking in religion. That's what they're walking in. They're walking in religion, their feelings, what they had in mind. And so again, if anyone is operating in their feelings, it's Marcus. He's the one that's always making these videos saying he feels like God told him this or God gave him a vision or a dream. The Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him and he feels like Trump's going to be president he feels this way he feels that way he feels that the scriptures say this he feels that he's saved he feels that others aren't saved because they push back against him if anyone's operating upon feelings that's marcus again we are operating based upon what the word of god says so let's let's deal with this because he constantly wants to say unity 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 as i've already said unity is found in agreement on the essentials on doctrine, not found in things that are contrary to the Word of God. That's why we don't accept Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons as brothers in Christ, because they operate outside of the biblical doctrine that is essential for one's faith, which is what Marcus does. So when it comes to unity, we can have disagreements with brothers and sisters over secondary issues. Another thing that he loves to do, and so many also love to do this is say, well, I don't like denominations. Again, another man-made word, you know, but I don't like denominations because you want to put in this box or you want to put in that box. Well, here's the reality. I'm a Reformed Baptist and I can still have unity with my Presbyterian brothers and sisters, with some of my Lutheran brothers and sisters, with some of my brothers and sisters that claim, claim to be non-denominational, even though it's kind of a oxymoron because they do fit into some category of a denomination. Um, Cause if they have a statement of faith, they basically are laying out what they believe, which is basically what a denomination does. 
They just put it on the title so we can say, no, this is what we affirm. This is what we believe the scriptures are teaching us. But they all agree on the essentials of the faith. They may disagree over some secondary issues such as eschatology. Even the gifts of the Spirit, even when you talk about are the sign gifts still for today, which Marcus, of course, believes they are. But some within the body are cessationists. They don't believe that the sign gifts are for today. And yet they can still have unity with brothers in Christ who would say, yes, I do believe the sign gifts are for today. That's not what divides us. It's when you start attacking, teaching, promoting, preaching things that are contrary to the essentials of the faith, which is what Marcus does. So what does the Bible say about unity? Because he constantly talks about unity, unity, unity. He wants to have that unity. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.10, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there, is no, that there be no divisions among you, but that you are you being united in the same mind, in the same judgments. We're going to see this pattern. So when Marcus is saying, well, we need to have unity, what I'm explaining to you is Christians who disagree on secondary issues, the issues that are actually not heaven and hell issues, we're still of the same mind because we are in Christ united and we don't disagree over those essentials of the faith because we're of the same mind. 1 Peter 3, 8, finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Again, unity of mind. Philippians 2, 2, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. So when you talk about unity, unity is found again in truth in what brings us together. The things that Marcus teaches and believes, they don't bring us together because he has a different God. When you deny the Trinity, you do not have the one true and living God who is by his very essence one, yet three distinct persons. He denies that. Therefore, the Jesus you claim to worship is not the Jesus of the universe. It's not the Jesus who's created everything. Because Jesus is not the Father. The Father is not the Son, nor the Spirit. And so when you deny that, you are outside of the faith. You don't have unity of mind. You're not one of the same mind. Acts 4.32 Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said, that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. Now again, when it says who believed were of one heart and soul, there's so much in there because when the word soul is used, heart and soul, heart is interchangeable with mind. So again, they were of one mind together with each other. This is why I said this is so important that we understand that when we are in Christ, And to have that unity, to be a mature man in Christ, is to have of the same mind. When it comes to doctrine, if it's a secondary issue, sure, we can have a disagreement. But you deny the Trinity, it's not a secondary issue. You teach baptismal regeneration like Marcus does, it's not a secondary issue. You teach works righteousness, it's not a secondary issue. You are attacking the essentials of the Christian faith. Look, man, I'm going to just let the Holy Spirit do the talking. I know for a fact that God is with me. There's nothing, there's nothing, no, there's no doubt. Like, there's literally no doubt. People be coming and to me saying, I know God's been dealing with you. No, you're lying. God ain't been dealing with me about none of the stuff you're talking about. You're wrong, you know? And so that might sound arrogant to people, but I know me and God are good. That right there should be a scary thing for you, Marcus. God's not dealing with you, you said, when it comes to your denial of the Trinity, when it comes to your baptismal regeneration, when it comes to your works-based salvation. God's not dealing with you? 
It's because the God that you serve is not dealing with you because it's not the true and living God. As I said, the God you follow and worship is not of the truth. So, of course, that God is not dealing with you because your God is of the devil. So, therefore, he wants you to continue in your error, to continue in your lies and deceit and false teaching that you can lead over 600,000 followers on your YouTube channel and over a million people on your other social media accounts. Straight to hell with you. But that doesn't have to be the outcome if you repent and believe in Jesus Christ, the true Christ, who is the second person of the Trinity. That salvation is a work of the triune God, the Father sending His Son, the Son willfully laying down His life to die on the cross for all of those that the Father has given to Him. And the Spirit coming and convicting the world of their sins and pointing them to the one who can save Jesus Christ. You see, the work of the triune God is evident in one's salvation. And if you repent and believe in the true biblical gospel, that man is saved and justified by faith and faith alone, not faith plus baptism, not faith plus works, but faith alone in Christ alone, you can have eternal life. 